Hello, I'm Ben of Board Game Schoolhouse, and this is Elementary, where you can come to learn how to get the most out of family board game night. Today we're talking about the three pillars of gaming. Um, you might be saying, that's not actually a board game. And you'd be right to say such a thing, because unlike all the other episodes of Elementary, this is about not a single board game, but the overarching philosophy behind the series. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, close enough. Once upon a time in 2020, I was talking to a buddy of mine about sportsmanship in board games. We both talked about how we learned to be good sports by playing various youth sports ball games. It occurred to me then that because of the pandemic, a lot of kids were going to miss out on critical life lessons typically instilled in them by coaches and parents when playing team sports. And then an idea hit me so hard that I had to literally go sit down. The idea was this. Why couldn't all critical life lessons typically taught by sports also be taught by board games? Uh, uh. So how come we don't do that? Well, the answer is pretty simple. There really aren't any massively popular board game club equivalents to things like Little League or YMCA basketball teams, so kids don't exactly have board game coaches to look up to and learn from. In fact, by and large, kids are just learning to play board games from their parents or their friends, and depending on what those experiences are like, it's shaping their expectations of what the purpose of board games is and how to behave when playing. So I made, or more accurately, am making Elementary, which sets out to teach adults how to be better board game coaches so that ultimately kids can be taught valuable life lessons through gaming. Uh, hey Ben, didn't you say something about the three pillars of gaming? Yes, imaginary critic in my head, I did. And I'm gonna get to that next, not because you harassed me about it, but because I was gonna do it anyway after the backstory. We talk about this a lot in education. Oh, hey, did I mention that I'm an actual elementary school teacher? Because I am, so I'm not just blowing smoke about all this stuff. If a kid doesn't feel safe, they cannot learn new things. There's neuroscience that supports this and backs all of it up. And if you stop and think about it, it is just sort of common sense. I mean, would you rather play a game with someone who you know is going to be patient and helpful when you ask a question or make a mistake, or someone who's gonna flip their lid in those same situations? Right, so your number one job is to make sure that any kids who you're playing board games with feel safe. The foundation of safety is feeling valued, and a basic way to show someone that you value them is to listen carefully to what they say and to repeat back to them what they've said. Are you listening to this? This proves to them that you were listening and that what they say matters to you. You might think you sound a little crazy at first, but you should get used to saying things like, I heard you say, and then summarize what the person just said. Another big part of keeping the game safe is setting expectations in advance. More than anything else, that means setting the expectation that sometimes you lose, and that's okay. You may want to actually have kids practice the expected behavior for losing in advance of ever actually playing a board game. And of course, it's equally important to set the expectations for what to do when you win as well. So yeah, that's two pretty specific things you can do to help make sure that board games are safe for kids. Speaking more broadly, you want to do your best to think about and intentionally shape the experience the child is having when playing the board game. You need to prepare yourself to be patient, selfless, and act as a positive role model. Truly wonderful the mind of a child is. <laughs> yeah, actually pretty much just like Yoda. So this one probably seems pretty obvious on the surface, but actually it is not. You see, you're actually in charge of shaping what the child believes is fun about board games. It is a choice you can make, and so you need to think about it in advance. Kids will learn from you what is supposed to be fun about playing board games, so you have to model it intentionally. If you show them that you have way more fun when you win than when you lose, guess what they'll notice? <laughs> No, you can't wipe them off, they're holograms. If you act jealous when someone is doing better than you, they will see that. It's all Obi-Wan's fault. He's jealous. He's holding me back. And so help me if you cheat or if you allow others to cheat, they will think that is normal and acceptable.
Do you have everything you need there, pal? So that's a lot of what not to do. Let's talk about what to do. I believe board games are fun because they bring people together, they activate our imaginations, and they exercise our brains. So when I play board games with my daughter, those are the things that I focus on naming aloud and reacting to. Every time you play a board game with a kid, you should say something to the effect of, I'm so excited to be spending time with you playing this game. You should call attention to the elements of story in the game and build upon them. And you should help kids see the advantages and disadvantages of different choices they have on their turns. Like I mentioned before, the impetus for this whole series was creating valuable life lessons for kids through board games. When I think about the most valuable lessons I learned from playing sports as a kid, the three that stand out are integrity, sportsmanship, and teamwork. You can instill all of these same ideals in kids when playing board games by taking the time to plan ahead about how you're going to teach them the game and how you're going to react when playing and all the things you're going to say throughout the entire experience. For example, to build integrity, you're gonna normalize things like re-rolling dice that are cocked or bounce out of the dice tray. Make sure kids know that following the rules of the game is essential to playing it. And if someone does intentionally cheat, be kind but firm when addressing it. And teach kids to finish what they start, all while allowing for reasonable breaks, should something like big emotions or anything like that come up. Build good sportsmanship with kids by intentionally teaching them how to win, lose, and compliment other players. Teach them that being kind to others isn't just about their words, but also their tone and their body language. Never allow put-downs, including self-deprecating ones or ones that are disguised as jokes. And encourage kids to think about what it feels like to be someone else at the table, not just themselves. If you want to focus on teamwork, you need to play team-based or cooperative games. When I was a kid, there were very few of these, but now there are tons to choose from. When playing these, be sure to acknowledge aloud whenever one player makes a decision to better set another player up for success. And be sure to describe aloud in general the way players are working together in order to be successful. Teamwork. One last tip I have for you is to use observational language whenever you play board games with kids. Observational language is literally just saying aloud what someone else does. Practicing this will help you remove judgmental language from your speech so that you can be intentional about when you do insert judgmental language. In other words, stop saying things like, good job, and start saying things like, I saw you took some extra time to think about what you were gonna do before you took your turn. And that's how you make the most of playing board games with kids. If you're interested in game-specific tips, be sure to check out the other videos in the elementary series. Each game I give advice on is also accompanied by a playthrough episode and a how-to-play episode that is designed for kids to watch with you before playing. If you liked the video, please prove it. And subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. I'm Ben of Board Game Schoolhouse, and this has been Elementary, The Pillars of Gaming.